Hello there and welcome to another live chapter reading for Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Today I shall be reading from First We Kill All the Lawyers by Celie Kay. Chapter 1. A Recusal for Love. Donovan Trote whipped off his designer trench coat and with a quick smile at the judge, neatly draped it over the bar separating the gallery from the court. He adjusted his cuffs, smoothed his suit coat and tweaked a crease in his slacks. Then his lips curled up into a grin. My apologies, Your Honour, he said with his classic aristocratic flair just a hint of a British accent clipping his vowels. The elevated commuter train was held up by some unfathomable crisis. He shrugged. I thought that would get me across town faster than a cab, but once again I was proved wrong. I've been on trains across the Midwest delayed by cows or sheep and even the occasional misguided commuter, but the L just leaves me flummoxed. It seems to stop whenever, for only God knows whatever reason. Donovan brushed a lock of hair off his forehead and smirked. My paralegal client calls them L farps. Those in the courtroom chuckled. The judge, however, scowled. Shirley Magnuson narrowed her clear blue eyes and pointed her gavel at Donovan. Why do I think you were late because you were forced to tear yourself away from the arms of some blonde bimbo, providing you with afternoon delights? A stern gaze swept his body, then she chuckled and shook her head. She patted her blonde, neat blonde hair, pulled back into a neat bun, and her ruby red lips rewarded him with a sly smile. Not sure why you were named one of Chicago's most eligible bachelors, I don't see the attraction at all. But your many trysts are no excuse for being late to court, she pointed her gavel at him. Don't let it happen again. Donovan placed a hand over his heart. Your honour, you wound me. I merely got a late start this morning and I've been unable to catch up. Please be assured that I hurry to this court in great anticipation of... District Attorney Wallace J. Sullivan cleared his throat. <clears throat> your honour, must the rest of us be subjected to this bull of malarkey? Unlike defence counsel, I take my job seriously and I would like to proceed. I have defendants to hang and witnesses to fry, he chuckled. And I so enjoy inflicting my legal prowess on attorney trait. He plucked at the arm of his suit as if removing a piece of lint, a smile blooming on his face, like taking candy from a baby. Drugs Madison nodded. All right, let's begin, she gestured to Donovan. Counsel a trait. I believe you have a motion or two. Of course I do, Your Honour. Where would you like to begin? At the beginning, counsellor. Now get on with it. Unlike the L, this court is the schedule. We stick to it. Donovan bowed his head in deference. Of course, Your Honour. He pulled a legal pad from his briefcase and studied it for a moment. Then he gazed at the judge, a slight smile crossing his face. Your Honour, I move for a complete dismissal of the charges against my client. With prejudice, of course. Judge Magnuson frowned. On what grounds? Donovan shook his head, trying to appear dismayed. Sadly, Your Honour, on the grounds of illegal search and seizure. A violation of the Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and Article 1, Section 6 of the Illinois State Constitution, which states, the judge waved her hand, I know what it says, Councillor, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Of course, Your Honour, the police had no arrest or search warrant when they broke down my client's door. They didn't even have probable cause to enter. Their entire conversation before entering the premises revolved around whether their search warrant would come through in time to conduct a legal search. They also failed to knock and announce before entering. Instead, they just barged in and seized everything they could find. The DA huffed and muttered, he's making that up. Donovan went back to his briefcase and pulled out a rectangular device. He held it up for the judge to see. It was all recorded on my client's doorbell, Your Honour. This little doorbell has sound and sight capabilities. I believe it's called a ring. My client called him while the police were discussing their options. I advised him to let them implicate themselves. I also told him to demand a warrant and when they couldn't produce one, deny them entry. Sullivan jumped to his feet. Your Honour, we were not made aware of this evidence, in a haughty tone he added. Besides, you cannot record people without permission. That evidence is inadmissible. The judge scowled and peered over her reading glasses at the district attorney. Nice try, Wally. Security tapes used to prove or disprove an alleged crime are always admissible, and you know it. Now let the counsellor proceed. Thank you, Your Honour. Donovan approached the bench and handed the judge a document. As this transcript reveals, the police knew they were entering illegally. He walked over to Sullivan and tossed a copy to him. Then a district claiming rendering the seizure illegal. Donovan turned toward the judge and scratched his head. I don't know where our esteemed DA studied law, but at Harvard we were taught that an illegal entry makes anything seized after the fruit of the poisonous tree. Which means, of course, that all the evidence used to arrest and indict my client was inadmissible. And that means none of the resulting charges can stand. I respectfully request the dismissal of all charges against my client with prejudice. Donovan gazed at the district attorney, attempted to cover their blunder by the evidence seized that was in plain sight. 
attorney his expression stern. I also ask that all evidences illegally be returned to my client forthwith. Donovan removed another sheet of paper from his briefcase. My client's wife recorded every single item seized. Not only did she manually maintain an inventory, but it was also verified with an in-home security camera. We will consider any cash or valuables missing from that inventory to have been the subject of theft at the hands of the police or the DA's office. He handed the list to the judge and smirked. My client will not stand for sticky fingers, Your Honour. He will sue for a full recovery. Donovan folded his hands in front of him and shook his head. Sadly, Your Honour, this is not the first time the police and the district attorney have violated my client's rights. I fear the time has come for legal action. We have every intention of filing a lawsuit for malicious prosecution, police abuse of power and false arrest. He sighed dramatically. The citizens of Chicago, the residents of Cook County, do not deserve a police force riddled with corruption and abuse. They have every right to expect and tainted justice. The corrupt actions of the few threaten the freedom of many. We must put a stop to it. Your Honour, that's slander. Donovan shook his head. It's not slander if it's true, my good sir. He cocked a well-tended eyebrow. Prove me wrong. The judge cleared her throat and Donovan brought his attention back to her. His eyes swept her womanly charms. Judge Magnuson appeared particularly affectionate after a night off. He shook his head and mentally scolded himself for such impure thoughts. Donovan executed a courtly bow. Thank you for your time and consideration, Your Honour. I am confident that you will grant justice where justice is due. Donovan pulled his hand out from underneath Judge Shirley Magnuson's robe, and Shirley slumped back in her majestic maroon office chair and smiled. It was the smile of a sexually sated woman. She sighed with contentment. My God, Donovan, that tongue of yours could play a concerto on a violin. Where did you learn to do that? Donovan absently stroked her creamy thigh. Years of practice, my dear, he smiled and stood. Let's move to the sofa, shall we? You are more than ready for my manly instrument, and believe me, it is more than ready for you. Shirley giggled. She stood up and removed her robe, daintily hanging it on a coat tree, as she walked towards Donovan. She removed the pins from her light blonde bun and shook out her hair, the curls cascading around her shoulders. Then she kicked off her shoes and unzipped her dress, allowing it to drop to the floor. Donovan sat up straighter on the couch and smiled. My God, woman, I love it when you dress like a dominatrix at a kink club. He stood at the tight navy blue corset with white lace and pink bows and purred. He simply looked delicious. He yanked her onto his lap and kissed her. His hand dug into her hair and grasped it by the roots, pulling her mouth more tightly against his. His tongue dove into her mouth and coaxed hers into an erotic dance. He moaned, you are going to be the death of me. He nibbled her neck, then moved to her ear and bit down. Shirley jerked away. Damn it, Donovan, that hurt, and I think you drew blood. Donovan fought the lust that threatened to flood his mind. A taste of the judge's blood was so tempting. He tightened his lips over the incisors that threatened to emerge as fangs. He didn't dare expose his true nature to a woman such as Shirley. He lapped at her ear and groaned again. I need to be inside you, darling, or I shall explode. He yanked at the corset and tore it from Shirley's body. Hey, I liked. Shush, my dear, I need to get inside you. I must feel your velvety softness squeeze my manly pride. He gently pushed Shirley back on the sofa and parted her thighs. He took another lick, then Donovan stood and removed his belt. He unzipped his pants and exposed his rigid cock. So beautiful, Shirley breathed. Her voice reverent, please, please. Without a word, Donovan wrapped her legs around his waist and plunged inside her. He threw startfully, rhythmically ramping up Shirley's arousal until she screamed his name. Her eyes rolled up into her head and she collapsed onto the sofa, her limbs loose with no obvious strength. Slowly, Shirley smiled and opened her eyes. Oh, Donovan, she cooed. That cock of yours is pure magic, pure unadulterated magic. Why, thank Donovan grinned. Why, thank you, my dear. Always a pleasure to be of service. Shirley smiled. Of course, after last night, you conflicted yourself out of my courtroom. I didn't have time to act before your appearance this morning. But I will have to recuse myself during this, well, whatever this is. I will be forced to pass off your case to another judge. Of course, my dear, I would expect nothing less. He gazed at her and affectionately stroked her arm. I would never compromise your integrity like that. We must end to your justice is secure despite our other pursuits. Shirley's eyes narrowed. Unless your skilful seduction last night was planned... Did you intend to force me to recuse myself so you might find a more amenable judge? Donovan chuckled. Judge Magnuson, I find you entirely delectable and utterly irresistible. If you recall, I arrived at that soiree with another woman on my arm. It was only after our eyes met in the heat between us almost scorched the carpet that I was forced to invite you out for a quick drink. I was not even aware you were the judge assigned to this matter until the schedule was posted early this morning. Motions hearings are always a crapshoot. You know that. It was simply too late to request a change of judge. He gazed at her, his fingers playing with her silken hair. 
Now that our attraction has been established, however, I think we need to plan for the long term. I have no intention of ignoring our rather explosive chemistry. Shirley smiles tentative. Explosive chemistry, yes. However, I should warn you, I don't share. Donovan grinned. And despite our reputation to the contrary, neither do I. I hope you enjoyed that chapter reading and that you'll go check out the book. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.